Welcome dear audience students and scholars here I am Dr. Amjad Ali in this video we are going to discuss about time horizons in macroeconomic dear scholars know that we have some sense about the facts that describe short run economic fluctuation we can turn to our basic task that is building a theory to explain these fluctuation that job it turns out is not a simple one before we start building the model however let's step back and ask a fundamental question here why do economists need different models for different time horizons before the answer of this question let's discuss how the short run and long run differ most macroeconomists believe that the key difference between the short run and the long run is the behavior of prices. In the long run, prices are flexible and can respond to changes in the supply or demand. In the short run, many prices are sticky at some predetermined level because prices have uh, differently in the short run than in the long run various economic events and policies have different effects over different time horizons to see how the short run and the long run differ consider the effects of a change in monetary policy suppose that the federal reserve uh, suddenly reduces the supply of money by 5% according to the classical model the money supply affects nominal variables variables measured in terms of money but not real variables the theoretical separation of real and nominal variables is called the classical dichotomy and irrelevance of the money supply for determination of real variables is called money or monetary neutrality okay while well, discussion about the how the short run and long run differ most economists believe that these classical ideas describe how economy works in the long run at 5% reduction in the money supply lowers all prices including nominal wages by 5% while output employment and other real variables remain the same thus in the long run changes in the money supply do not cause fluctuations in output and employment in the short run however many prices do not respond to changes in monetary policy a reduction in the money supply does not immediately cause all firms to cut the wages they pay all stores to change the price tag on their goods all mail order firms to issue new catalogs and all restaurants to print new menus instead there is a little immediate change in many prices that is uh, many prices are sticky this short run price stickiness implies that a short run impact of a change in the money supply is not the same as the long run impact a model of economic fluctuation must take into account this short run price stickiness we will see that the failure of price to adjust quickly and completely to change uh, in money supply as well as to other exogenous changes in economic condition means that in the short run real variables such as output and employment must do some of the adjusting instead in other words during the time horizon over some prices are sticky the classical dichotomy no longer holds nominal variables can influence real variables and the economy can deviate from the equilibrium um, uh, predicted by the classical model okay for the better understanding of this concept let's discuss a case study here if you want to know why firms have sticky prices ask them one of the main question here how sticky 
uh, are the prices and why are they sticky? In an intriguing study, economist Alan Blender attacked these questions directly by serving firms about their price uh, adjustment decision. Blender began by asking firms managers how often they changes their prices. The answer can be summarized in the form of table here. Okay, this table yielded uh, two conclusion. First, price uh, sticky are common. The typical firm in the economy adjusts its prices once or twice a year. Second, there are a large difference uh, among firms in the frequency of price adjustment. About 10% of firm uh, changed uh, their prices more often uh, than once a week and about the same number changed uh, their prices less than uh, often uh, once a year. Blender asked them the, uh, for many years uh, why they did not change price more often. In particular, he explained to the managers uh, several economic theories of uh, sticky pricing and ask them to judge how well each of these series describe uh, their firms. So let's discuss the summary of uh, those findings also. Oh, the series of price uh, stickness. Uh, we have the summaries of these findings here. Okay, uh, the summaries uh, of these series uh, are uh, uh, rank them by the percentage of manager who accepted uh, the theory uh, as an accurate description of their uh, firm pricing decision. Notice that each of theory was endorsed by some of the managers and uh, each was rejected by a large number as well. One interpretation is that different theories apply to different firms depending on industry characteristics and the price stickness is a macroeconomic phenomena without a single microeconomic explanation. Among the dozen theories, a coordination failure, here you can see that coordination failure tops the list. According to the blender, it is it is an important finding because it suggests that the coordination failure play a key role in explaining price stickness and thus short run economic fluctuation. He writes the most obvious uh, policy implication of the model is that uh, more coordinated wage and price settings somehow achieved could improve welfare, but if this proves the difficult are impossible, the door is open to active uh, monetary policy to cure the recession. Okay, the model for aggregate uh, supply and aggregate demand. We have here one of the main questions that uh, how does the introduction of sticky prices changes the view of uh, how the economy works. The answer to this question that is by considering economists two favorite words supply and demand. In the classical uh, macroeconomic theory, the amount of output depends on the economy's ability to supply goods and services which in turn uh, depends on the supply of capital and uh, labor uh, and on the available production uh, technology. Flexible prices are a crucial assumption of uh, classical theory. The theory posits sometime implicitly that prices are just to ensure that the quantity of output demanded equals the quantity supplied. Okay, the economy works quite differently when prices are sticky. In this case, as uh, one will see, output also depends on the economy's demand for goods and services. Okay, demand in turn depends on a variety of factors, consumer confidence about their economic prospects, firms, 
perception and the profitability of new investments and monetary and fiscal policy okay because monetary and fiscal policy can influence demand and demand in turn can influence the economy's output over time horizon when prices are sticky price stickness uh, provides a rationale for why these policies may be useful in stabilizing the economy in the short run. We begin developing a model that makes these ideas more precise. The place to start is the model of supply and demand uh, which we have discussed in the classical model. The basic model offers some of the uh, most fundamental insights in the economics. It shows how the supply and demand for any good jointly determine the goods price and quantity sold as well as how shift in supply and demand affect the price and quantity. We know uh, introduce the economy size version of this model the model of aggregate supply and aggregate demand this macroeconomic model allows us to study how aggregate price level and quantity of aggregate output are determined uh, in the short run it also provides a way to contrast how the economy behaves in the long run and how it behaves in the short run Although the model of aggregate supply and demand uh, resembles the model of supply and demand for a single good, the analogy is not exact. The model of supply and demand for a single good considers only one good within a large economy. By contrast, as we will see in the coming uh, videos, the model of aggregate supply and aggregate demand is a sophisticated model that incorporates the interaction among many markets. So this is all about the time horizons in macroeconomics. So see you with another video. Ciao.